I had a conversation with someone uh, just the other day and they were telling me about uh, their rescue dog situation and that they'd gotten a rescue dog for their family and um, they'd had a lot of challenges with the dog and long story short that ultimately they were lucky that the rescue could take back the dog. And in this conversation, my brain as a dog trainer, I, was, I, I could identify and recognize some things that a lot of people overlook when it comes to getting a rescue dog. So it's really important that before you get a rescue dog, you watch this video. In this video, we're going to talk with instructor Carol who has had multiple rescue dogs and as a professional dog trainer has helped lots of rescue dog owners through some of their training challenges and we're going to tell you some of the things that you need to prepare for the things you need to be ready for and some of the things that you can do to give your rescue dog the best start possible I'm Ken Steep this is instructor Carol welcome back to McCann Dogs Here at McCann Dogs, we've helped more than 100,000 dog owners who are just like you to overcome the same dog training challenges that you have. So if this is your first time on the channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button so that I can help you to have a well-behaved four-legged family member. Now, Carol, you've had lots of experience with rescue dogs, whether it is as a dog trainer, training other people to help their dogs through uh, whatever problems, maybe it's even skill training, but you've also had lots of personal experience with rescue dogs. And what does someone who's thinking about getting a rescue dog, what do they need to know to make sure that that experience is as, as positive as it can be. So I got uh, Burke, he was actually in a home with uh, over 30 dogs, okay. it was a hoarding situation. So um, I took that on with a little bit of caution and he is a phenomenal dog, but uh, having had a few rescues, I've learned uh, that there can be issues, but I also feel like I'm better able to handle them now with the experience I have. So let's uh, go, let's take Burke for a walk and let's chat a little bit about some of the things, you know, that our viewers might want to know if they're, if they're picking uh, of a rescue dog or they're trying to decide whether a rescue dog will work for their family. What are some of the really important things that you think they'll need to know? I think some of it is the expectation. You know, I, I was pretty lucky. Burke came with almost no issues, even though he had a very bad start in life. Okay. But some dogs are going to come with some issues and they're not going to disappear overnight. So if people think, and I was one, well, I'll get an older dog. Yeah. That'll be so much easier. Right. And, uh, you Versus know, a pup. Puppy. Yes, and Newman Bing I got, lots of people had puppies, I got Newman Bing at three, and you know, after a mere 276 days, right. he had learned not to eliminate where he stood. Yeah. Uh, so I think people need to understand it may not be easy, you know, it depends on the dog, and there's certainly things we can do to, to make it easier on us and our, our rescue dogs, but we need to understand it may not be simply, I get this older dog right. that's all trained and doesn't have any issues. Yeah, that, that actually leads me a little bit to, uh, you know, I mentioned in the opening uh, an experience I had talking with someone, um, leadership and, and how to be a great leader for your dog. And that starts the first day that they come home. Um, talk, tell me a little bit about what a first day home with a, a new rescue dog might look like. And, and I think a lot of people would be surprised. I think a lot of people think this dog has come from a bad situation. Right. So we want to erase that and change it immediately. Okay. So a lot of people want to love those dogs up because the dog's been locked in a kennel or a cage so I want to cuddle him up and let him know he's loved but a dog that's never had that before it just could be totally overwhelming so a lot of times and certainly um, we'll talk a little bit about separation anxiety but when I got Burke it was very low-key mm -hmm. you know I used a crate and it was a lot of sitting calmly and just let him get used to a whole new environment right. not overwhelm same thing a lot of people get a rescue dog that's been in a crate and I want to give him lots of freedom sure. but it's not something the dog's used to and uh, one of the reasons dogs they want some direction you know sure. he came from a hoarding situation can you imagine living wild with fights around you right. and no direction in your life so our dogs want some leadership you know not not that we're you know correcting them right. but they need to have yeah, some. you're not ruling with an iron no. fist you're just giving them good information exactly and they setting want, them up to be right exactly they want to understand how they fit what's expected of them how things work and us being those calm leaders and giving them good information can make them feel so much more comfortable i do want to train uh, my rescue dogs yeah again they need the confidence in me as a leader sure. they need to understand how they fit and you know sometimes we luck out and we get a dog that you know someone's already done some training especially okay. if they're being rehomed right but lots of rescue dogs aren't and we sometimes make the mistake because they're uh, you know look like an adult that right. they understand everything and yet they may not even if they come with some training 
I want them to understand um, how they fit with me yeah. and that process brings us so much closer together. I love that point point. and we do we often get in classes we'll get adult dogs rehome dogs rescue dogs and the act of doing the training has so much value for the dog you know it whether does. they know us even if they have great skills going through that process with you is such a great way to give them information and build confidence in you from them. The other reason I think training is so important with a rescue dog is that it may prevent problems that could come up. So many people I see get a rescue dog and they say, oh, they're perfect. But there's something called a honeymoon period sure. that when a rescue dog, I mean, picture the life he came from, he was in a hoarding situation, running wild. Then he got locked up in a kennel for, I think about a year. Yeah. So um, then suddenly he's in, the, in this house. Uh, it's so different, so dogs often will just be very quiet and calm but you may in two or three months find out that they have huge possession issues or some aggression issues or stimulation issues and those may not become apparent for the first little while if i can get some training in i may avoid a lot of those problems down the road yeah it's the ounce of prevention uh, idea yes. yeah it's a really great way to it also positions you as a great leader you know we talk about leadership so much and when you're setting your dog up to be successful or um, being proactive with their training that you don't have to say, no, don't do that, no, don't do this. Exactly. And, and you want your dog to know that regardless of the situation that they've come from, that good things are coming from you. And that includes a little bit of guidance. Exactly. And, you know, the value in us when we train, you can see Burke spends a lot of time right. looking at me, don't you, buddy? So, uh, you know, a lot of people say you don't get that bond when they're not a puppy. You absolutely do. And once you have a dog that's interested in you, which we get when we do some fun training, then it's just so much easier. Everything yeah. else in life falls into place. I want to talk really briefly about a schedule for training. Like what sort of, how often would you be training uh, your new rescue dogs that you, when you'd bring them home? You know, I, I know a lot of people say, oh, I'd, I need to train an hour a day for in these skills, but that's not necessarily the case. No, it's much better with all dogs and rescues included is if I can try and build it into my regular routine. So yeah. when I get up in the morning, um, I might teach him to walk nicely at my side with his breakfast kibble. Yep. And then later in the day, um, I'm gonna work on his response to name and learning how to play with me and interact with me in the evening after he's had a big run maybe we work lying down calmly in the house now Carol I n want you to talk about your first rescue these guys aren't gonna believe it but let's talk a little bit about the first animal that you rescued so my first rescue dog was actually a pig a right. potbelly pig named Fred yeah and uh, Fred had come from uh, he came from a breeder who went to a home and they really couldn't handle him. Mm -hmm. the, it wasn't a fit. And he ended up back at the breeder. And the breeder was quite glad when I wanted him because she said everybody wants little tiny cute piglets. Right. So I got Fred and it, again, he, he taught me a lot about um, you know, having an animal and to begin with, he was, he didn't want to be touched. You know, right. he's one of those dogs I, I, or pigs, I don't want you to, I don't want to sit in your lap. Right. I haven't had that experience that was different for him. So giving him his space and I mean, you know, not that long after he'd follow me everywhere and he loved to cuddle, but. And I think what was so fascinating is after you built, you started to establish some of that relationship and put in, you know, that, um, that's a slower pace of building relationship, you were able to take him to like uh, all sorts of events, you know, with all kinds of people around. And he was uh, the focus, uh, the kids would come up and, and be introduced to him and he was okay with that kind of thing. He, he was great. And the family that couldn't handle him, I think they didn't do any training. They sure. just assumed that this young animal yep. would behave. Right. Uh, you know, I came here, he was my first dog through McCann. Yes, yeah. And uh, did the family dog program yep. and then into agility and the bond it formed, doing those things, learning those things, and um, the confidence it built with him was phenomenal. Now we talked a little bit earlier about some nuisance behaviors and some challenges that you might have, and, and one common thing is that people don't really understand the challenges of potty training, whether the rescue rehomed adult dog comes into a new home. I've struggled with this a little bit with my sheep herding dog, Mac, who lived in a barn before, and it's something that I just kind of expected him to not have accidents in the house. 
But let's talk a little bit about, you know, the common challenges people might have with a rehomed dog. Absolutely, and I would say three of my rescues um, came learning to eliminate wherever they stood. So they've, one, don't understand they should go outside, and two, they haven't physically learned to hold. Right. Th that's something our, our puppies learn and through crate training. Yep. We can teach them going outside is valuable and teach them physically how to hold. So when you get an older dog that hasn't had that experience, it can be a bit of a challenge. So people need to be ready to put some time, um, the same as I would with a puppy. So when I get a rescue, I will use a crate. You know, when he gets up in the morning, I take him right out. Yeah. Uh, when he's finished his breakfast, I take him right out. After we've played, you know, anytime I think he's going to go. So I build a pattern of going outside because eliminating is self-rewarding for the dogs. Right. So if I can pattern that early when he's with me, that may set me up for the rest of his life. Yeah, and I think that something that's really important to remember is that it's not the dog trying to be defiant. No. They just don't know. You know, they, they haven't they haven't had to hold their bladder in they, some cases. They don't know. You know, Newman Bing, uh, my young Parson Terrier, was in a kennel, yep. and um, he didn't even know he was eliminating. Right. He would eliminate as he walked. Yeah. Because he was in a filthy environment, right. he just, so he never even learned, so he wasn't being bad at all, right. Right. but he just didn't know any other behavior. And these are the things that you need to really think about and prepare for. The other thing that people who get a rescue, I think, need to be prepared for is separation anxiety. Okay. I really did not understand that, but after several rescues, I get it. Okay. Uh, and I was lucky with Earl, my Great Dane, the separation anxiety was uh, very short-lived, but I, I used a video camera and I would videotape him, and for the first while, he would be so distressed when I left and circle and drool, and then over time, um, it went down to he would maybe circle once and then lie down and relax. Mm -hmm. With Newman Bing, um, I lived with that his entire life. We were never able to totally work through that because he was so much older when I got him. Mm -hmm. So it's something people need to be aware of. So many rescue dogs develop separation anxiety. Again, it comes back to I can't change my dog's life overnight. And a lot of times we have a lot of fun with our dog, sure. but I also want my dog to understand it's all not just fun and, and just being calm so that when I leave, it's not too bad. And I'll do the same preventative measures I'll do with a puppy. You know, uh, for the beginning, I'm not gonna spend every minute with them. Mm -hmm. I want my dog to understand it's okay to be a little little bit apart. Yeah. When I leave, I'm gonna make sure I give him a Kong with frozen peanut butter mm -hmm. or a Kong with a cookie, uh, make sure he's got a bone to chew on. So I'm gonna make sure he's crazy so he doesn't destroy anything sure. and he feels secure and safe because most dogs are very comfortable with that so I'm gonna set him up so me leaving is very calm you know before I leave I give him his Kong I ignore him for 10 minutes mm -hmm. I come home um, you know maybe go out for half an hour come back in and I ignore him again for a little while just everything's calm and then you know after about 10 minutes I can let him out so I don't want that huge stress of me leaving the house because uh, rescue dogs are just uh, so prone to that. You know, I was really lucky with Burke as I was with all of my rescue dogs, but I think it's important you understand what expectations are and prepare to put a little bit of work into it. No different than you would with a puppy and have fun with your rescue dog. Now we talked a little bit about leadership and how it's so important in your rescue dog training. So click that card right there for a leadership playlist that will really help you give that dog a great start. On that note, I'm Ken. I'm Carol. And this is the Burke. Happy training, guys.